The movie begins in 1943, World War II deeply entrenched the United Kingdom. Lieutenant Commander Ewan Montague, a Jewish attorney, hosts a party and announces during his toast that he is taking a hiatus from practicing law as he has been appointed the naval representative of the 20 Committee. Ewan gives tribute to his wife, Iris, and announces that she and their children will leave to be safe in America. Meanwhile, in the cinema, a British intelligence agent named Charles Chumley goes to take a seat when he spots his colleague, Jean, a woman who he has been crushing on for a while. He tries to converse with her, but she's uninterested in waiting for someone. He goes quiet when her date, an American soldier, arrives at his seat beside her. After the party, Iris approaches him to remind him they have no choice but to leave, as their whole family is Jewish and will be in danger if England is attacked. Hester Leggett, Ewan's loyal secretary, bids Iris goodbye and safe travels as she leaves to prepare for their early leave in the morning. Hester tells him his wife knows he would put his duty before anyone else and his own family, so her leaving him is right, even if it hurts them both. The next day, he says a tearful goodbye to his wife and children as they leave for America. Elsewhere, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill discusses with Admiral John Godfrey that he promised the United States that the Allies would invade Sicily by July of that year to push northward into Europe. However, the Wehrmacht may defend Sicily because it's an obvious target. They must find a way that Britain must trick Nazi Germany into believing the Allies would invade Greece. Admiral Godfrey suggests an operation from the Trout Memo, created by the 20 Committee, to be used. The next day, at Charles's home, his mother asks for info about Charles's late brother, Robert, who died on the battlefield. He was one of the British fighter plane pilots that died a week ago on the battlefield. The military encountered difficulties retrieving his body as he was killed in action in Chittagong, Bengal. Still, Charles assures his mother that he will find a way to retrieve his brother's body and bring him home. The 20 Committee conducted a meeting. Admiral Godfrey informed the 20 Committee that Britain must trick Nazi Germany into believing the Allies would invade Greece. Charles proposes an operation from the Trout Memo, which he dubbed Operation Trojan Horse, which would entail a corpse carrying false secrets and washing ashore. Despite Godfrey's doubts, he allows Ewan and Charles to plan the operation with his assistant, Lieutenant Commander Ian Fleming. After the meeting, Charles, Ewan, and Ian go to an empty office. Ian explains that the 20 Committee gave them the place to use as their headquarters. Their first task is to obtain the corpse they will use for the mission while Hester prepares the office and recruits new members. After days of searching, they still couldn't find a suitable body, Hester suggests her friend's help, who's a forensic officer, and they manage to obtain the body of a vagrant named Glindor Michael, who died by possible suicidal poisoning. One night at the Gargoyle Club in Soho, Ewan, Hester, and Charles discuss their chosen corpse. The team gives him the false identity of Major William Martin, Royal Marines, and uses Ewan's identification number. They decided he must have finance, and the woman should also work in intelligence to keep the mission a secret, which reminds Charles of Jean. The next day, Charles approaches Jean to ask for her cooperation, as William's fake fiancé, for the mission, which has been renamed Operation Mincemeat. Jean is reluctant, but in the end, she decides to help, and in exchange, she wants to learn more about the mission. They tried to take the corpse's photo to make it look alive, but to no avail, all their photos were not convincing enough. That night, Ewan, Hester, Charles, and Jean go to the bar to look for a man similar to William to take pictures of. They continue to brainstorm ideas for William's backstory. Ewan creates the romantic story of how William and his fiancée, which he named Pam, met and fell in love. Suddenly, an American soldier arrives at their table, per Jean's invite, and they are shocked by how he looks so alike to William. To keep the operation a secret, they claim they needed an American soldier, just like him, for an interview and some photographs, which he agreed on. Later that night, Ewan escorts Jean back to her house while they plan the perfect life story of Pam, and they each find themselves in William and Pam. Two months pass, and they still need to proceed with the operation. Jean offers someone to help with the pictures, and Ewan offers to escort her there. As they leave, Charles asks what the female employees are gossiping about, and it's about how Ewan and Jean do not use formal titles around each other, which he also noted. Later, Charles is called to meet Admiral Godfrey in his office and updates him on the successful preparation of the mission. Godfrey suspects Ewan's brother, Ivor, is a spy for Russia. He bribes Charles to spy on Montague, and, in return, Godfrey will locate and return his brother's remains, and Charles reluctantly agrees. Soon, Charles and Ewan discuss Jean and how she's becoming increasingly involved with the mission, especially with Ewan. Ewan denies it before explaining it further, the morgue called. Glindor Michael's sister, or William as they know him, has come to claim his body, as the hospital staff informed her of his current whereabouts, as she wants to give him a proper burial. Knowing this, 
It might put a dent in their progress. They explain that Glindor is employed in a top-secret mission, and his service will turn him into a hero. They try to bribe her, but it only offends her, and she leaves their office. With Churchill's approval, they will deploy the mission quickly. The next day, Ewan recruits two men from the British embassy based in Spain. Ewan explains the reason for inviting the two of them is because William's corpse would later be washed ashore in Spain, and their role is vital in the mission. Their role would ensure that the letters from William's corpse would land in Berlin. The next day the preparations continue. Jean makes the love letters written by Pam, which William's corpse would carry, and Ewan makes the fake documents containing the British attack on Greece more convincing. At the same time, Charles prepares the plans for transporting the body via submarine to the shores of Spain. Soon, they successfully convince Admiral Godfrey of the letters and finally complete the preparations. All they have to do now is to wait for the execution to take place in three days. They are having a small celebration party at the office, hoping for the mission's success. Jean reads Pam's love letter they made, they are all entranced with William and Pam's love story, even if they know it was all made up. After the party, Ewan takes Jean home. Ewan took the eyelash from Jean's cheek. The action flusters her, making Jean say a quick goodbye and go inside. The next night, Godfrey meets with Charles. He suspects Ewan's brother, Ivor, was the Soviet Union spy who helped Germany and wants Charles to investigate. Charles says he would never betray his friend. Charles reluctantly informs Godfrey he hasn't found anything proving Ivor to be a Russian spy. The next day, they photograph the letters that they will send out. Charles notices the officer slipping Jean's eyelashes into the fake document Ewan had taken yesterday. Charles stays silent but is confused about why Ewan has Jean's eyelashes on him. Then they prepare the body and put fake papers and letters in the pockets. After this, Charles, Ewan, Jean, and the driver assigned to the operation, specialist MI5 driver St. John Jock Horseful, goes to the bar to devise what the driver should do for the mission. While Ewan talks to the driver, Charles invites Jean to dance. Jean expresses her interest in William and Pam's love story. Saying that she dreams of such a thing happening to her, even though it's a made-up story. After hearing this, Charles realized that Jean must have fallen in love with Ewan, which they based William on so much. Charles tells her that unlike her, Hester, and himself, Ewan is lucky enough to have a family to return to. The reminder sadden her, so she quickly leaves the bar. Ewan sees this and tries to stop her. When he finally catches up with her, Jean confesses how she had fallen in love with William's figure inside Ewan and ended up forgetting the reality. She didn't realize that Ewan had a family in real life. But she tells Ewan not to worry about her, and he will be late for the mission. Later, Jock transports Ewan, Charles, and the corpse to the RN submarine base in Holy Lock. They load the corpse onto the submarine HMS Seraph, with Lt. Bill Jewell commanding the operation. After delivering William's corpse, Ewan immediately goes to Jean's house and apologizes. He knew that deep down, he also has feeling for her. He wishes her the best, and they both hope for good luck with William's mission. Jean doesn't say anything to respond, but tears fall down her cheeks after Ewan leaves. Two days pass. On the morning of April 30th, the Seraph arrives in the Gulf of Cadiz and drops the corpse into the ocean. All the while, the team prays for the mission's success. Fishermen in Huelva, Spain, soon find the body. Operation Mincemeat attempts to get the fake documents to Madrid. However, the mission is hampered by bad luck, as the Spanish resisted Nazi corruption better than expected. Captain David Ainsworth, the British naval attaché in Madrid, meets with Colonel Cheruti of the Spanish secret police in one last attempt to get the papers to the Nazis. Days pass with no news about the documents. Everyone's nervous, but suddenly a telegram from the embassy announces that the papers have been returned and will be sent to England immediately. After the documents arrived at night, you and Charles and the examiner examined each of William's belongings. Still, they were disappointed because nothing had changed. Even the royal seal stamp on the letter envelope is untouched. But when they open the letter, they find Jean's eyelashes missing. When the specialist examined the letter, it was concluded that it had been opened and reprinted. Meanwhile, Jean is ambushed and threatened at her home by Teddy, Gargoyle Club's bartender. He claims to be a spy for an anti-Hitler plot within Germany. She tells him that Major William Martin is traveling under an alias, but the classified information is genuine. After Teddy leaves, Jean informs Charles and Ewan of the incident. They believe that Colonel Alexis von Roney, who controls intelligence in the Nazi High Command, sent Teddy to verify information so von Roney could undermine Hitler. However, they have yet to be entirely sure. Outside, Charles finally expressed his feelings that he had liked Jean all this time but chose to keep it to himself for the sake of the mission. At the same time, Ewan, who had a family, 
was busy seducing Jean and missed that Ewan's brother was a Soviet Union spy. Charles suspected that the bartender must be Ewan's brother's accomplice. Operation Mincemeat might have been leaked to the Germans. Still, if Teddy told the truth, there's nothing to worry about. Later, Ewan takes Jean to his home for protection, but she soon accepts a job in special operations and leaves London. On July 10, the Allied invasion of Sicily commenced. The news arrives that the Allied forces have suffered limited casualties, the enemy is retreating, and they have successfully held the beaches. Afterward, Charles admits he received his brother's remains in return for spying on Ewan. Feeling sympathetic and relieved that Operation Mincemeat is a success, Ewan offers Charles a drink, hoping to fix their friendship. The movie ends with Ewan reuniting with Iris and their children after the war. Jean married a soldier, and Hester continued as director of the Admiralty Secretarial Unit. Charles remained with MI5 until 1952, later married, and traveled widely. In 1997, they revealed Major William Martin's true identity as Glyndor Michael, and they added an epitaph with his real name to William's headstone in Spain. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.